KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano Program, proud supporters of the Give Us a Moment Island Pride Beautification event. Cars Plus reminds you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Ahead on primetime, many of the island's homeless that seek shelter at Paseo are told to move out. This as plans for housing the homeless have remained idle. Plus, disconnections for non-payment of power and water bills will start back up beginning next month. And the latest on COVID-19 cases on island. Havadeh and good evening, everyone. The island's homeless that have been sheltering at the Paseo in Hagania are being told to move out. Plans to house them during the COVID crisis have been talked about for months, but nothing has materialized. Sabrina Salas Matanani reports. 56-year-old Florencia Cepeda has been homeless for nine months. But three months ago, she came to Paseo when she got word that the government was going to open a shelter. I don't know what to go. In tears, she says she was told just today, along with dozens of other homeless people, like 67-year-old Peter Marriott, to get out of Paseo by the end of the day. Not much of a notice, you know, and uh, it leaves us uh, with no hope. So we don't know where to go. Hopeless and homeless, Marriott and his roommate were kicked out of their home by their landlord in March. He's been living at the Paseo since then. This is my first experience uh, being homeless. Um, so uh, it's really, it's really a hard life. Uh, I hope that uh, their eyes will open and do something for us. As we reported, the initial plan was to have a homeless tent shelter at the Paseo, complete with catered meals and Wi-Fi. But after word from the feds, plans changed to instead move towards securing a hardened shelter. We had to amend our plans four times already uh, to try and uh, meet the kind of the situation going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just tell you honestly that uh, we're still working. It's still we're behind schedule. This is one area that uh, we I don't feel that we're ahead yet. Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio says active procurement is underway and hopes to have a better answer by Monday. And fortunately for the homeless at Paseo, they don't have that kind of time. I have a disability and I feel neglected in ways of uh, getting us into a safe um, habit, you know, shelter where, so we don't catch the virus, but instead we're left behind. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matanani. Disconnections for non-payment of power or water bills will start back up again on July 1st. But the CCU says customers still facing financial hardships can come in and work out an extended payment plan. The utility company suspended service disconnections in mid-March due to the COVID crisis emergency declaration, but announced today that as customers were allowed time to receive federal and local assistance, the disconnect policy will be back in force by next month. CCU member Simon Sanchez says the utilities realize that many individuals and businesses are still struggling, so... We adopted a resolution for both GWA and GPA to uh, allow them to work with customers. It'll be on a case-by-case -case basis to set up a payment plan. And the payment plan could be for as long as 12 months. He says bills cannot be forgiven, but GPA and GWA will work with customers to provide as much time as they can to catch up. Everyone might be a little different, and depending on your unique circumstances, they just wanted the flexibility to say, here's a three-month plan for Mr. Lacanto, here's a six-month plan for Mr. Sanchez. And, and if they get to the end of that first agreed-to plan and there's, a ch there's an issue, a, a challenge remains, that they have the flexibility to extend it for as much as another six months. Under the payment plans, penalties and late fees, including interest, will be waived. Three days into the launch of its roving pandemic unemployment assistance processing center, the Guam Department of Labor, in partnership with the Guam Public Library System, is offering services at Jotnya today. 
KUM spoke with GDOL customer service representative for the PUA program, Catherine Cabrera, who says having the sites located in the village libraries makes it convenient for the applicants and claimants. We've heard a lot of uh, appreciation as to standing up this program, and uh, we're not also, um, this is the process, the beginning for them to get their monies due to them that they've lost due, you know, being furloughed, lost hours due to the pandemic. So a lot of appreciation being shared here. The satellites are, are convenient. Uh, a lot of people don't have transportation to get there, and, and because of where we're, we're practicing social distancing, appointment-wise, we're dealing with, um, what, about 30,000. So that's the convenient part. Cabrera says they take 10 applicants each hour, and it's by appointment only. GDOL plans to continue efforts until mid-July, and tomorrow they'll be set up at the Agate Library from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And just like that, the number of COVID cases on Guam went up by four. The latest confirmed cases are military service members that are part of a unit deployed to Anderson Air Force Base and were previously staying at the Reef Hotel in Tumon. According to the latest public health situation report, the four new cases are connected to four other confirmed cases. They were identified for testing based on investigation and contact tracing. Since Friday, June 12th, there have been a total of eight confirmed cases within this particular military unit. All the service members have been placed in isolation and under investigation. As of today, the total number of COVID cases on Guam is 192, with five deaths, 170 recoveries, and 17 active cases. Public Health Director Dr. Jana Manglonia says she's confident the Department of Defense took the necessary precautions with the deployed unit before they arrived on Guam and after testing positive for COVID. The military does um, their own thing and they don't, they don't really divulge that. I, I've never really posed that question. We just take the ball and run with it. But we don't know. These guys may have been quarantined wherever they were and tested wherever they were because after the TR, everyone is on guard. I think the entire unit is on quote unquote lockdown. They're, they're a little more stringent than we are. The entire unit is in isolation at the airbase. As for Reef Hotel employees, Dr. Manglonia says protocol requires that everyone that may have come in close contact with the active cases should be tested, but we have not yet been able to confirm if they were. There are two strategic impediments to the reopening of the local tourism industry, says the interim vice president of GVB, Jerry Perez. Speaking today at a Rotary Club meeting, he said one is coronavirus safety. The other is getting the governments of strategic markets like Japan and Korea to allow their citizens to travel. Perez says they've been discussing both the different consular offices here. Well, we're working that issue, and we're starting to see some glimmer of hope in that, okay? Uh, we need to focus on our product in Guam and, and deliver, make sure that we can deliver a safe uh, destination and a clean destination. And to help ensure that, GVB is seeking more volunteers to participate, participate in an Island Pride beautification event scheduled for Saturday the 27th. A major island-wide cleanup is well organized, and so any, co any company or organization or individual who wants to participate can check with GVB and we'll find a place for, for them. GVB is still targeting a July reopening of tourism, but officials say it will only be a trickle to start with. Paris says Japan has yet to open up, but they've been in touch with some Korean travel groups that have shown interest. Now it's a matter of fine-tuning the draft implementation plan for the fall 2020 school year. GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez says one of the most critical pieces is seeking parent input. The proposal for the upcoming school year is to have an ABC and repeat schedule. This will likely follow an alphabetical framework to determine cohorts and to allow only a third of the school population on campus at a time. Uh, depending on your cohort, you'll come to school one day and then the other two days you will engage in distance learning uh, at home. For those who, um, you know, uh, who's, or, you know, who are in a family or in a household with the same last names, um, they would go to school on, we would hope that they would go to school on the same day and thereby uh, help their families deal with some of the issues that they might encounter, including, um, you know, basically juggling their, their student schedule. 
Bernada says for those without reliable internet access, there are plans in place to provide hard copy lesson plans to take home. Another priority for the task force is assessing and evaluating the mental, social, and emotional health needs of GDOE employees and returning students. We reached out to the Lieutenant Governor um, and the Department of Behavioral Health. Think about what we can do during the summer, even though school's not in session, but to think about what we can do during July to, um, to raise the visibility of the behavioral health hotline that's out there for those you know, students and employees who, who feel a need to, to speak to someone and to seek services. GDOE plans to meet with representatives from the parent-teacher organization on June 24th. The board is expected to vote on a final plan at its next meeting on June 30th. We'll be back with more news right after this. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Alba's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the islands. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers, and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. King's Restaurants are still cooking up your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner plates and have them available for carryout and delivery. Call them into Munning at 647-5464 or in Denido at 637-5464 and order for carryout. For delivery, please download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get King's delivered to your door. Be safe and stay healthy until we see each other again at King's. We've asked the world to give us a moment to collect ourselves and heal. Well, the time has come to pick ourselves up and thrive again. Let's take one last moment as an island community to clean up and beautify our home for ourselves and before we welcome visitors to our shores. Our island needs so much care, and it's amazing what we can do when we work together. Join us on June 27th for the Guam Island Pride Beautification event. It'll be a Guam moment we can all be proud of. Visit GuamVisitorsBureau.com for details or to volunteer. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the CNMI remains at 30 with two deaths. And according to hospital CEO Esther Munya, it's been more than a week since the last of the virus was recorded. I believe it's five that have been are still active. Um, we should be able to. They've been doing very well by the uh, um, right now, so that means that they are likely going to be um, released soon. All five cases are at the Kanoa Resort Isolation Facility. The patients are assessed at least twice a day. Public Health in Saipan is no longer reporting recovered cases on their public dash, dashboard. Munya says they consulted with the CDC, citing new studies out of South Korea 
that make defining a recovered patient less clear. As the fate of Guam delegate Michael San Nicolas hangs in the balance amid an investigative subcommittee probe, the island's voice in D.C. has largely remained silent. So Tomas Manglonia sat down with our closest congressional neighbor for his take on the matter. I don't know when this is going to be over. Uh, I, I don't know what my colleague did. Uh, and uh, I can't one way or another judge him. There are people who are going to do that. Sinemai Delegate Sablon reacting to news of an investigative subcommittee probing allegations against Guam Delegate San Nicholas. He needs to get up and, and he needs to answer this. And only he can answer this. Those answers might be revealed in a process that could bleed into the next year. I wish well for Mike. Uh, I'm sure it's, I'm sure he's frustrated with this. Uh, you know, I keep his family in my prayers too. Um, and the people of Guam. Outside of the current controversy, Guam's first term delegate is reportedly often absent from his office and voting. When it comes to reaching out to his sister islands, Sablon said, well, I was had no issues with asking for help. I had no scruples. So, um, I have I've not been able to, I have not given my, any assistance because he hasn't asked for any. He adds that delegates are the face of their territories in Congress. While active online, San Nicolas has yet to face the public on island. For Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnya. The full interview with the CNMI delegate is now streaming on KUAM's social media pages. Adeloupe has appointed someone to replace Chamorroland Trust Chairwoman Pika Farron. Farron's term expired, and the governor has appointed Lucia J. Lagos to replace Farron. CLTC Administrator Jack Hattig had high praise for Farron, who was instrumental in reforming land trust protocols after the Bergata Heights scandal. Under Farron's term, the trust was also able to successfully settle a lawsuit brought by the federal government, preserving the program for future generations. She's been a tremendous supporter and advocate of our, our constituents. She's been a tremendous uh, help, of course, to our agency in, in some of the things, the policies that uh, are developed. And uh, her lasting legacy is is going to be one that that is a remainder that that's going to be a, a hard uh, sh hard shoes to fill by the next person that uh, gets appointed. Farron's replacement is a former Guam police officer and is currently a security guard according to the nomination packet submitted to the legislature. While Hatig had high pr praise for Farron, he said he has not shared that with Adelou. The governor has the appointment authority to appoint um, members to the commission and um, I respect uh, the governor's decision, um, and I work. I look forward to working with whomever uh, is there. Farron's final land trust meeting was supposed to be today, but that meeting was postponed due to the lack of a quorum. She was appointed by former Governor Eddie Calvo. And Governor Lou Leon Guerrero has signed an executive order to address the mental health drug, alcohol, and rehabilitation needs of inmates and detainees at the Department of Corrections. The Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center will stand up a satellite operation within DOC facilities with necessary personnel and resources to support programs to address those needs. Gibwick will be guided by National Rehabilitation Facility and Correctional Health Care and Mental Health Care Accreditation Standards. 360 University of Guam Tritons are graduating tonight in a virtual ceremony, the Fanyom Nakan commencement. It is UOG's second largest graduating class ever and also marks a record high number of master's degrees conferred in an academic year. U.S. Ambassador and former Guam resident Yuri Kim is giving the keynote speech virtually from Albania. Kim is the first Korean-American woman and the first person from Guam to be named a U.S. ambassador. The ceremony will be streamed at 7 p.m. on the UOG Facebook page and shared on our KUAM Facebook page. Congratulations to the UOG graduates. Stick around for more news. This is KUAM.
Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more. Mix and match data paths. Take your data further. Your health and safety is our business. Protect your employees and customers with APEC Professional Services. Our certified team uses EPA registered disinfectants and CDC approved procedures proven to aid in the fight against coronavirus and other harmful microorganisms. Prevent reinfection through disinfection. Call our office at 477-7310 or our 24-hour rapid response hotline at 858-2852. Keep Guam safe with APEC Professional Disinfection Services. That's when little mama came to stealing lust. Whoa, she off the rate to scale, she had me shut. Right, yeah. But if you if you single tonight and can't find your friends, then I, <clears throat> I hope you don't mind me asking. Do you wanna dance to the music? Do you wanna rock to the beat of the drum? And we could cut it up. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. Welcome back for today's Good Note. Bree and Chris speak with the principal of Harvest Christian Academy on all the great things the students have been doing for our island community. Uh, today we're going to Harvest uh, Christian Academy. And we're going to talk with the uh, principal, uh, Lawrence Nagengast, here and talk about some great stuff that uh, Harvest had uh, done. And we'll just go uh, right to the beginning. As we had actually got the press release from Guam Regional Medical City, and uh, they had wanted to commend the good work that you guys did. So we'll just start at the beginning, uh, principal. Whose idea was it? Uh, what did it take to get her done? And what was the response afterwards? And then while you're doing that, we'll go ahead and throw up the, the picture so everybody knows how good Harvest has been. Sure. Uh, so basically, it started with the students uh, probably a couple weeks into the whole coronavirus um, situation. And basically, the beginning of the year, when we start our clubs, we... Uh, had a dues for the club that the kids pay. It was $10. And the goal of that money is throughout the year, it, it gave a budget for the, for the students to use as a club. And so if they wanted to run an event, if they wanted to have a, a small party, if they wanted to do something in the community and needed fundings for, there was a little bit of, of some money in a pile there for them to use. And so what happens is the year gets busy, the year gets going, and a lot of that money didn't get used. They did things as a club, as clubs, just maybe that didn't require any money. And so then it got to March, and there was still a decent amount of money, well, $1,800, in fact. And uh, one of the club presidents, Justin Kim, came to Mr. Pegarito, who is the advisor for all the clubs on campus, and said, sir, um, you know, we as a group of clubs came together and kind of said, We'd like to do something for the community with that money and with the, the situation being a medical one, uh, we don't really have a better idea than, than giving it to the hospital. And so really that's kind of from the beginning of the year when it was collected for their use all the way to the idea to give it to the hospital is kind of a, a full year story there. That's amazing. Um, tell us a little bit about the donation and the reaction from the hospital. Uh, so what happened is, again, it, when it was, happening was sort of right in the beginning times when there was a lot of fear out there so there was a plan to have a group of, uh, of the students go to the hospital and present it but uh, potentially out of some fear of, of just when the time was there in March uh, they ended up just dropping it off so there wasn't an exact which is why there wasn't pictures of that uh, meeting 
uh, is because it ended up being just a, a simple drop off, not a necessary presentation like we would have liked to have um, there at the hospital. So the reaction, uh, obviously, very kind. The press release they wrote um, was very kind and supportive of what these kids did. Right. And, you know, I, I guess, uh, Principal, I, I know the curriculum, Harvest, uh, I'm pretty sure that you teach the kids to be Christ-like in their behavior. So what's this like when they want to do something good? Um, how does it make you guys feel? Does it make you guys feel like, hey, we're doing, some, we're doing a good job with these kids? Yeah, I'm thankful that especially when these leaders, uh, most of them juniors and seniors in high school, are, are, you know, kind of putting feet to what they've been taught. And, uh, and, and the fact that even in a, in a crisis kind of situation, uh, they're still thinking of how we could potentially take the, those funds and benefit um, others around them. So even in a, in a tougher time like that, they're still, still putting the things we've tried to teach them to good use. And, uh, and again, I, I hope these things continue with them as they graduate and move out to different communities. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Goldstone Creamery Birthday Club. We have got five birthday celebrants on this June 18th, so one, two, three, four, five. Happy birthday to each and every one of you, starting with Ezra. Happy birthday number 21. Sending love to our grandson and love to always with a hard emoji. Never get enough of that. Wishing you a wonderful day and many more years of blessed celebration. Stay focused and ready for a lifetime of adventures as well as some challenges. Love Grandma Reed and all your family on Guam, Texas, and Washington. Happy birthday, lucky number seven to Aaron Anthony Uggen. We love you. Say Daddy, Mommy, Sissy, Rosalie, and the whole family. Kaylee Cameron Napati Mignola celebrates birthday number six. And to my beautiful granddaughter, Grandma Jennifer, Kian, Sage, Mommy and Daddy, and the entire family send you all of their love. Happy birthday number nine to Janessa Burkhart. We are very proud of all your accomplishments. Enjoy your day and God bless. With love from your mom, dad, Sebastian, Auntie Kit, Grandma, and Grandpa. And also Keisha Lynn Karen Mijola. Wishing you an awesome and fun birthday today. We love you always and forever, baby girl. And that's a full list. And we hope each and every one of you had a fantastic and awesome, a rad birthday. And if you'd like to be a part of the Cold Stone Creamer Creamery Birthday Club, register online on KOM.com and make sure to include your name, your photo, and your birthday. That's our report for tonight. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, everyone.